Okay, we are recording. All right, thank you. Okay, okay. So we'll get half of the presentation, that's good. Okay, um, so now that we're selecting an activity team, the other option we have is to assign a value, an FTE or full-time equivalent value. So up front, what we're typically doing is estimating the amount of time this person is gonna spend on this particular activity. So in this case, we have both Diane and Mara estimating a 0.1 FTE or about four hours a week for each of them spending on this activity. What we use that for is to be able to do a little bit of analysis on the, if you will, the resource cost for doing this. Now, typically human resources are the biggest cost factor in any project here. So at this point in time, we're saying we have a 0.2 FTE between Diane and Mara. If I were to go to the objective level, which uh, encompasses all of these activities, it says we have about a 0.6 FTE to do this. So it allows me to look at any level in the pyramid and kind of do a, a cost benefit analysis. Is this the best use of our limited resources? So it gives you some data to work with there. Um, our next activity down here is gonna create a relationship with a local car seat installer. We don't want public health people installing car seats, way too much liability to assume. So we're gonna have somebody who's a professional, licensed, bonded, insured, et cetera, to do that. Down here at the bottom, we have the ability now to assign external partners. So there's a, an external partner database that you manage. Um, in this case, we have Andrea's car seat installation and Andrea shown as our partner in here to do this. So we've attached Andrea now to that activity. And should we choose to, we can give Andrea access back into the system. Typically, we have what we call partner access, which is very limited. What it allows the, the partners to do is just update the data around the activity. So for instance, we might ask Andrea to input the number of car seats that they install each week in the system. And that would be kind of the limit of, of what they could do with it here. But it, it, it helps you to avoid having to call Andrea, say, how many car seats did you install? Go back, launch the system, and put that data in the system. So it just helps automate that process a little bit there. Uh, our next activity here is we need to be able to get the word out. So we're going to go to our PIO office and do a little bit of a marketing campaign. And they're going to help us to to get the word out to the specific demographic of people. So those people who fall under a certain income category are eligible to get free car seats under the program. So we're gonna have them target that market and then maybe do some social media and some regular media marketing to get the word out. We're gonna ask those people to go to our, our contractor, Andrea. Andrea will qualify them and then she'll install the car seats. And then the next activity here is actually installing the car seats at the rate of 20 car seats a week is, is our target here. So let's go back to our pyramid here for a second. Uh, under the organization of USA Public Health, we have a group called Community Health. Everything now underneath that is gonna be Community Health. Uh, the Safe Kids program is the what we're doing, the service. The goal is, and, and kind of paraphrased, is to provide car seats to those who can't afford them. The objective, uh, by June 30th, very specific, we're gonna distribute 20 car seats a week. So that's our SMART objective. And then we have a set of activities to get us there. Find funding, hire an installation partner, create awareness, install 20 car seats a week. So we call this a good solid operational plan. We have a good set of activities that once we accomplish those, we're going to accomplish the objective, which will help us to accomplish the goal and the service moving up there. So now we're gonna walk that plan we just created through the PDCA cycle here. So what we just saw was the P part, the planning part. So we've got a good solid operational plan. Let's put it into action here. So we're gonna go into the due phase here. And what, what's gonna happen is our financial partner is gonna provide money to Andrea to procure car seats. Our marketing folks in PIO office are gonna generate marketing to get demand to go to Andrea to qualify them and install car seats. And this is gonna go on for some ramp up period as we, as we start up the new program, say 10 or 12 weeks. And what's happening in the background is we're setting up what we call real-time planning notifications. And what that is is an automated email system and in this case, we might want to set it up for weekly so that on a weekly basis, Andrea is going to get an email from the system that says basically, how many car seats did you install last week? There's a link in the email she'll click on. It'll take her right back into the what we call quick update in the system, which is just a, a screen that allows them to just basically enter 21 car seats and hit save. So this is going to happen, let's say, on a Monday morning. It's going to take her a grand total of about a minute to do that every week. So we're not asking too much as far as her calculation helping to keep the data up to date. And this is gonna go on for some period of time until we decide, let's see how we're doing. So we transition into the check phase here. And in the check phase, we're gonna compare our plan to our actual and make some analysis there. So at this point, we have this activity selected here of installing 20 car seats a week. I'm gonna go down and hit this little chart button here. 
and it's going to show me exactly what's been happening over the time period here. So down here, uh, this blue line that you see is the data that Andrew has been entering every Monday morning, let's say. The green line is that target number of 20. The red line is the what we call the fallback number. What that's saying is if we drop below that number, I want to be notified because something has gone wrong here. So what's happening is every time Andrew enters a value here, it compares it to the red and the green line and sets the traffic light for you. So if, I'm, if my traffic light is red, I know I'm sitting below that 10 number. If my traffic light is yellow, I know I'm sitting in between the red and the green line. And once I get up here and stay up here, I'm in green the whole time. So this chart is what we call micro-level performance monitoring, micro-level being a single activity over time. And looking at this particular chart, we ramped up over about four weeks, and then we stayed up above that 20 number. So that's our target number. To me, this looks great. Everything is good. So back to our PDCA cycle, the next phase would be adjust. In this case, no adjustment necessary. The plan, we're right on plan. Our, our, our actual values are right at the plan number that we looked at. So what we'll probably do is just put this uh, through the cycle again. Maybe another quarter we'll go back, hit the check phase, look at that chart. If we're still sitting above that line of 20, everything is good. We're going to continue on. Now, let's go back and play devil's advocate for a second here. And what if the chart looked like this? So we ramped up. We got up past, you know, into the yellow zone here. It looks like we capped out in the yellow zone at about 14 or 15 car seats a week. So this is an issue here. We're not in the green. This traffic light will be setting it yellow. So I'm going to go back and figure out what's going on here. So here's, here's that traffic light. We're setting it yellow right now. What I want to do is just kind of march through my plan. So number one is we're going to have funding. Well, we've got a gold bar that says we've done that. Uh, installation partner, gold bar says we've done that. Work with PIO for marketing big red light. Okay, this is where I'm going to focus my effort. What's, what's causing a red light? First thing you do is just go down to the notes field. There should be a note in there saying, may not be reaching the proper demographic, you know, that financial uh, group that, that qualifies for the program. Uh, only have a demand of 15 car seats a week. Okay, here's our problem. So at this point, what I would probably do is go to my PIO office and explain the situation. Say, you know, we all agreed that we thought 20 was the target number for our geography here. Uh, we're only running at 15. Can you give me any insight? Um, the, the answer, number one answer might be, well, here's what we've done. You guys came to us a couple months ago. We assigned John to this program. John has been uh, marketing like crazy out there. He picked, he did the analysis and picked, you know, these neighborhoods because they fall typically within that financial demographic. And we've been doing social media marketing. We've been doing regular media marketing. We're getting the word out pretty good. I think we're doing a great job of marketing and potentially we just overestimated our target number here. So maybe what we're going to do at this point in time is make the adjustment to the plan. So in this case, we're going to take the plan down from 20 to 15 and then go through the cycle again. Maybe another quarter we'll check it, see if we're still running along about that 15 number. This is how plans can stay up to date forever because you can always make the adjustment to the plan through this cycle, and then the plan is basically new again at that point in time. Now, the other answer we could have gotten was that um, we go to the PIO office and, you know, express our concern, what's going on. They say, well, here's what we did. You know, we assigned John to this project. He's our, our best marketing guy. Um, unfortunately, after John got ramped up on this couple of weeks into it, he had to go on a medical leave. And a couple of weeks later, we realized he wasn't coming back. So we reassigned this project to Bill. Bill had to clear his calendar before he could do it. So he's only been doing it for a couple of weeks. Um, based on, on the analysis that John and Bill both did, we still believe that the target number is about 20, but it's just going to take us a little longer to get there. So in this case, what we did is made an adjustment to the resources. In this case, we substituted Bill for John, and now we're, we're moving forward. Resources could be obviously anything. could be financial resources. could be facility resources. It could be bringing in an external partner. Lots of different things we could do. But most typically, you're going to have one of four scenarios here. Uh, number one is going to be no adjustment necessary, as you saw in the first chart. Number two is going to be we're going to adjust the plan based on, you know, we, we misread the, uh, the you know, demand. Number three would be we're going to adjust the resources, being financial or people or whatever that happens to be. And number four is maybe we're going to make a, a compromise. We're going to adjust the plan, maybe down to 17, adjust the resources up by bringing Bill in and maybe bringing some outside help in to get him ramped up. So one of four scenarios typically. So each and every plan in the system will go through this cycle continuously based around whatever time frame you choose. It could be weekly, it could be annually, it could be quarterly, whatever you want it to be. 
So I'm going to walk through the cycle, get down to that check phase, take a look at that chart, say, yep, everything's good, continue on here. So that's PDCA. I mentioned in the, uh, on the activity screen, there's three types of activity. Uh, number one is this simplistic project-based activity. Uh, number two is a QM activity, quantitative measurement. And basically the difference is I've got a finite number to measure against. Let me give you an example. Uh, we have a WIC clinic who's been tasked with doing 50 nutrition consultations uh, during the fiscal year. So at this point in time, we have that denominator. We have something to measure against. So now when this email goes out to the WIC clinic manager saying, how many nutrition consultations did your clinic do last month? They can just go in and put in a number. So now at this point in time, let's say they put in five. Now it's going to add it to that, the numbers that they had collected in the previous month. So maybe that was 20, 20 plus 5 divided by 50 says we're halfway done. Now we're going to look at that time frame and compare it to that and determine whether we're lagging or ahead of schedule or behind schedule. So, again, it's, it's a little bit more automation it's just if you have a, a finite number. The third type, quality assurance, uh, is the least used but uh, the most automated. So this is like the car seat example where we have a weekly frequency. So what's happening is every time Andrea goes in and updates the number of car seats installed, it bumps the dates to the next week automatically for them. The high and the low value was that red and green line you saw on the chart, and this determines where that traffic light gets set automatically. And then the metric type would be car seats installed. So lots of choices for activity types. It covers everything so far. The last couple of years, we haven't had a request to add a new activity type or any changes to that. So I think we've got it pretty well covered, but we're always wide open to, to being able to do updates like that. Uh, macro level performance monitoring, the dashboard. So I'm going to go back to my groups tab here. I'm going to select the department level, which is a, a level one. So it's the top level uh, department or the top level group in the organization here. Now I'm going to go up and select the little traffic light. What that's going to do is take me to my macro level performance monitoring tool, the dashboard. And the dashboard is very cool. Number one, I can look at the entire department on one screen and see exactly how we're doing aggregately against all of the plans in the, in the department here. Or I can look at just the strategic plan, or I can look at just the ship plan, or I can look at just community health or just WIC on one screen. So depending on typically who I am when I log in, because everybody has a default group, so if you're the, uh, the health commissioner, chief health officer, administrative officer, you're typically department level. So when I log in, I'm going to see the whole department. If I were the, uh, the WIC director and I logged in, this would say USA Public Health WIC, and everything on the screen would be related to WIC, the people, all the activities, everything else. So it's, it's very nice because you can have dashboards for everything, and it's, it's fully dynamic, just depending on what you select from the group or how you're attached to a group uh, as a user. What you're seeing up here on the top left corner is the big picture. So either at the goal, objective, or activity level, I can look, and I'm looking at activities, and it's showing me I have 14 completed activities, nine in green status, six in yellow status, you know, some kind of a, a potential issue, one in red status. Now, this is all real time, so if I was looking at this, this may just flip to red. Somebody went back and looked at this activity and flipped it to red. So what I'm going to want to do, instead of having to go look through my plan, I can click on anything on this screen to drill down. I'm going to click on this particular activity. It's going to take me to the activity. In this case, it's that PIO office activity we've already been looking at. Again, I would go down to the notes down here, look at that, go make whatever adjustments I had to do to get it back into my green status there. Now go back to the dashboard screen. Uh, the other thing you see sitting right next to that traffic light is the schedule gauge. What the schedule gauge is showing me is for the selected area of responsibility, in this case, the entire department, we're running on aggregate 44 days behind schedule against our plans. So remember, each plan had a beginning date, ending date, percent complete at the activity level. So what it's doing is just calculating this and aggregating it together. So in this case, we have we're 44 days behind schedule. Assuming it's probably a fiscal year plan, that's not too bad. Uh, the reason it's yellow is because it's less than 60 days behind schedule, otherwise be red. And if it's on schedule above, it'd be green. So just by looking at that, I get a good idea of how all the plans aggregated are running against the schedule. Now, this could be just my strategic plan here, if I had selected strategic plan, and then I would see how just the strategic plan is doing. So, big picture up there. Now, I wanna drill down and look and see how each of my people is doing. So, everybody who's been assigned as an activity leader in this case, so we have Diane here. Um, this column is showing me the last time that person went in and updated their information in the system. 
I color coded it very simply because I just want to look and say green means less than 30 days. I know my data is pretty real time. If it were yellow, if any one of those is yellow, it means that 30 to 60 days. And if it was red, it would be over 60 days. So right now I see I've got pretty real time data. I'm in good shape. Here's a second roll up of that FTE number. If I want to use the FTE tracking, what it allows me to do is look at employee utilization here. Employee utilization says that Diane is running at a 1.25 FTE or doing the work of one and a quarter people. Most public health people do that. However, long term, that's not a good thing. You want people down around a 1.0 or less FTE because otherwise people get burned out. They leave the organization. If you got somebody who's willing to do that, that kind of effort, you don't want them leaving. So let's work to, to balance them. One of the things you could do is you could click on Diane's name. It will show you every activity Diane's been assigned to. You can look at those and say, you know, these two are in spread skill set. I'm going to reassign those to Fred, get him up to a 1.0 FTE, get Diane down to a 1.0, all is good. Lagging in days here, and what that's showing me is the number of activities calculated to be lagging behind schedule and color-coded by how far. The number of days, this is the schedule gauge, if you will, for the individual person, days ahead of or behind schedule. Overdue is just that, ending date has come and gone and yet, not yet complete. And then the red, yellow, green, and gold for that person. So my, my first view is by looking at my people. If this was a large department like yours, you would have a whole screen of people at the bottom that you could scroll through and see exactly how each person is doing down there. The other thing I can look at is my org chart. So how is each division, bureau, office, and program doing against their plans? Same thing. So I can look across here and see when they last updated their information and how they're doing against their specific plans. My last group is how are all of the other plans in the department contributing to our long-term vision or our strategic plan? So what we're looking at is by strategic priority here. So these are the ones for our little demo organization. In your case, these would be the ones for uh, your department in here. And what you're doing is looking at the aggregate of all of the other plans that are related to uh, partnerships in this case or data quality and dissemination. So you can see that, that what you're doing is driving you towards your future vision or your strategic plan. Top right corner called my priorities are individually selectable objectives that you want to keep your eye on. Typically, they're reds and yellows. Typically, they're either yours or uh, your employees, people who are working directly for you that you just want to keep an eye on, keep them front and center. Uh, very simple to change that. I just go down here and click this little flag and go back up here and that green one because I don't need to watch it anymore is now gone. Hey Fred, just, um, just real quick. This is uh, Nick. Um, just looking at the time, it's about 3.35. Um, I was hoping we could go to the uh, reaccreditation part soon uh, and if possible leave about maybe five to ten minutes or a little bit less than ten for question and answers from uh, from the people here. Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think we're at a good point now to, to there's a couple other things I'd, I'd like to show you at some point in time, but for now, let's, let's dig into the reaccreditation stuff. Okay. Yeah, and also, um, one other thing I wanted to mention also is that um, for the framing for the folks that are here today, what we've done so far is we've had a two-day reaccreditation work group meeting uh, in which we looked at all of the domains, the standards, the measures, and the requirements, and each division has been assigned uh, a certain set of measures and standards. Uh, so again, just for the, the framing, what we're doing here is each division is working to develop either a document or a narrative that they will submit to uh, my bureau, who would be monitoring, you know, how far they are with the narrative um, and whether or not the, merit, the narrative actually meets uh, all the criteria. Okay, perfect. Okay, well, let's let's dig in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to log out of, of my little demo group here and log in so I can get your account up so you can see the actual plans that are in there. Give me one second here. Uh, Florida Department of Health, that would be you. Okay. Um, what we've done down here is put in two versions of the reaccreditation project plan for the integrated network and then for the state specifically here. So you've got two of them you can do. We could uh, combine those into one, however you want to do it. But for now, let's look at the, the state plan here. They're, they're both identical, actually. 
So what we're looking at is that that is a group. So now I can have that dashboard you just saw for just the accreditation piece in here. So I can have a specific dashboard for that. Underneath the, the group here are the services. So the first thing is the seven steps of uh, public health department accreditation. When I look at the goals for that, it's the seven steps, obviously, all the way from pre-application through re-accreditation here. So you guys are obviously in the, in the six and seven of that area in here. The other thing you have is each of the domains. Underneath the domains, you've got the standards, and then down here, the, the 31 reaccreditation measures. Underneath the reaccreditation measures are the actual measures here, obviously. And underneath each of these, then, are the activities, which is basically those documents and narratives that it, you need to have. So the recommendation here is, uh, number one, that you're going to set the dates for when you want all of these documents to be compiled and uh, edited and put in the, in the system. But at this level down here, so um, describe the ongoing community collaborative process for continuous, at least annual enhancement of the community health assessment down here. So down here, you're going to have a document or a narrative. And basically, then, all you got to do is click on here, and here's your document management. You hit the plus button, you add a document in there, you put in a description of the document, you put in the actual date of the document in there, and it's attached right to that specific activity that is attached right to that uh, reaccreditation measure in there. And uh, what, what you also then can do is, at this level, now you, you said you have different domains assigned to different groups down there. What you can do is we, we can help you to mass assign uh, leaders. So what you're gonna have is a the objective leader, which would be down at the uh, the measure level. You can assign leaders, and then you can assign teams to those activities. You can assign all the dates in there. So now it becomes a full automated project plan to walk you through that process in here. So that, that's really the reaccreditation project plan, all integrated with the document management. So you've got all those documents in there. Then you can go back and take those documents when they're ready. Uh, the documents are all tagged with uh, red, yellow, green, and gold flags. Typically, once they're gold, you know, they've been submitted into EFAB. When they're green, they're ready to be submitted. And when they're yellow, they're a, they're a draft document that you can have multiple versions. Uh, the document management also does allow you to have multiple versions of every document in there, as many as you want. So that that's really the the reaccreditation accreditation reaccreditation project plan and like i said for for you know because of you guys are unique in the fact that you have the the integrated uh, um, accreditation and you have the state accreditation separate we put in two different groups in there but we can work to get those uh, structured any way you want so what else would you like to see on that nick um as i think about what else we'd like to see um I, I had a few questions too. Has any other health department used this software for reaccreditation yet? And when I say uh, any health department, I, preferably a, a large organization? Many of them are just starting into the reaccreditation process. I don't think there's anybody who's who's been using it. We just rolled out uh, this feature maybe two months ago. So as far as I know, I don't know anybody who's actually you know gone through the whole process and become reaccredited at this point. In fact, I don't think there is anybody at this point in time. Okay. But a lot of people are using it in the in the initial accreditation process, um, going through it. But I don't know that anybody's taken this all the way through again because, like I say, it's only been a couple months out there. Okay. So let's say we decide to use this for uh, for reaccreditation. Uh, we get uh, each division representative. Uh, in the system, their own, you know, username and password. Uh, yep. They have a, uh, they, they, so then they, they go to this menu right here, reaccreditation, then they go to using the tasks, they go to, uh, uh, you know, domain one, measure such and such, requirement. Okay, for this, this division was we're supposed to uh, upload a narrative description, they add the document. Um, does that then automatically send a notification to my bureau to say, hey, uh, emergency preparedness has uploaded this narrative description? Uh, and if so, I guess, um, how can we, because you mentioned if we put, it, it can track multiple versions of the same document in there, I guess, um, how can we communicate with the other division that, hey, we've reviewed it, it's ready for you to make these edits or changes? Um. Well, typically what happens is the, the documents are attached to activities, 
the activities then are um, based on your your people assigned and your date range are set up in the uh, automatic email notifications. So what's going to happen is on a regular basis, they're going to look at that that document. If it's not 100% complete, it's going to end up some point in time show it's lagging behind schedule or overdue. Then that notification is going to go out to whoever that that team leader is. They're going to be flagged to go back in and do whatever it takes to to get that thing up to date, whether it's a new version of the document or a new document or whatever that happens to be in there. Um, as far as notifying you guys directly, um, I'd have to I'd have to give some more thought to that about how that would actually happen with the uh, the notification system. But you know, worst case is we can certainly make that happen. Okay. Um, so let's say uh, right now for for reaccreditation, when uh, a division has a document ready for us to be reviewed, we have a shared drive. So let's say uh, Victor or Angela or Deborah, they go to the shared drive, they upload their document uh, for their division, shoot us an email, say, hey, this is ready for review. What is the difference between this software and, for instance, the use of a shared drive, um, aside from maybe uh, the option to send notifications and run reports? Um, metadata, let me show you that here. I'm going to go down to... Um a little demo organization again, so I can show you some live data here. Okay, um, hang on a second. Right group here. Okay, so when I look at a document here, again, number one, you've got a version control automatic right here. So if I do this, any any document with the same file name creates a new version over here. Secondly, when you put a, a document up on a shared drive, you basically have the place that it is, which, you know, if you, most people have what the, the 12 domains, the 39 standards, and the 97 measures set up as subdirectories. So you put this document under the specific uh, subdirectory that it belongs. So you've got the file name, which I believe is 128 characters a max, and you've got the date on the file, which is merely the last save date. Obviously, what FAB wants is the what they call the expiration date for those documents, which is part of the metadata here. You also have a description of that document, which can be as verbose as you want. Then you have any notes about the document, and you have the status flag that you can walk it through. A red, brand new document, yellow draft, green, finalized, gold submitted. So, you know, yes, you can save them all on your shared drive just as well. However, this just gives you another level of information around those documents to be able to manage. and you know, whether you're uh, at home or whether you're at a conference or anywhere, the system is all cloud-based, so you can get into it and get those documents and work on them. You don't have to be, you know, either vpn in or on your local uh, network. Okay. How would you, uh, I guess, uh, what would your approach be to running reports that are meaningful? So, for instance, if... Uh, my division director has to report to the agency performance management council or uh, to other division directors and uh, she wants to give an update and says, okay, here's where we are. Um, how could we run reports that are more meaningful or more detailed or go deeper than just, hey, for this requirement, we have a document that is attached to it. Um, so could we say, yes, it has a document, but this is where this document is. It's currently review or it's, it's, you know, uh, su it successfully meets the uh, requirement or it's being reviewed? Yeah, um, basically what you're going to have is the, the report that you're going to generate, uh, let me see what I have actually here, um, is the an operational plan report. And what it's going to be is that complete project plan. And it's going to have all of the information in the project plan, every note that's in there, every date that's in there, every person assigned to it, the document itself that's attached to it, the status of that document, everything will be in that report. So it's a very, very comprehensive report. In addition, if you choose to, you can build what we call VMSG Public, which is the ability to have a, a public web page that you can email to somebody or put up on your website that is all of the accreditation plan or a specific domain or a specific standard or a specific measure, and it'll show you the exact status of those particular items. So what you're looking at is the status of the plan and the documents just happen to be attached to that plan in the, in the proper place. 
So the reports are very, very comprehensive. Okay. Um, let, me, let me see. Hang on a second. Take a second. There's a big report here. So, yeah. So basically, what the what the plan would look like? It would be your uh, accreditation. You know, whether it's integrated or the state one. And then you're going to walk through down here. Um, you're going to have the seven steps of accreditation. So you're going to walk through where you are in those seven steps. You're going to go down to uh, domain one here. So it's going to show you the, the exact status for, uh, and, and all these traffic lights obviously would be different going down here. It's going to show you percent done on that particular uh, domain standard and measure. And even down at the activity level below those, what pieces are done, what pieces are pending, uh, whether they're on track or off, off track. So yeah, the reports are easy to generate just like that. You've got boatload of data in there. What would be the benefit uh, for our division representatives for using this software versus, for instance, a shared drive? So I could see some on my end, as far as the management or monitoring, I can you know, have some additional metadata benefits. What would be a benefit for a division representative who's working on these narratives or documents and uploading this? Well, th think about uh, a project plan. You know, you can have a manual project plan where you're writing everything on paper or you're putting everything in, in one note or anything along that line. What this does is have automatic reminders in there. So you're going to set up dates, say, uh, this document, you know, I need, to, I need to have this document in the system by um, July 1, uh, 2018. So you set that date in there, and it's going to remind you. You're going to set up those email notifications. It's going to remind you as you're getting... Uh, behind schedule on that document. It's going to say, hey, you're a little bit behind schedule. You want to go in and edit that document. It's going to give you the ability to go in through quick update and do those updates. So it's, it's just an automation of the whole process, basically, as opposed to you having to manually track that process, which you know, a lot of people are really good at, but why not let the tool help you to do all that stuff? Okay. Uh, for those of you, I'm looking now for the people in the room and also uh, Janet and uh, Anna, do you guys have any questions or comments? I was just thinking what you were just talking about. I mean, we're, we're going to be given, uh, okay, we have to upload a file on a specific um, objective or mm -hmm. place. And uh, so we're going to either have to have our own spreadsheet that's going to tell us, you know, when it's due and what the status is of and, you know, what we've been submitting. Or you can have a system like this that will do that same thing. But that way, we don't have to each have that individual spreadsheet or report. You, you know, we're all using one tool as a guide. And then you can very quickly know what's, what is, uh, you know, the status on every, on, e on each objective. So I, I kind of like that particular aspect of having it in a system like this. Okay. Nick, this is Janet. I think it would be helpful for us as well, particularly those domains where we have coordination with other divisions that we have individual people that are assigned for certain components of it, I think it would be great to have, have that capability to work. Yeah, and by the way, when you do the assignment to a domain, you can assign people from anywhere in the organization to that domain. So at the activity level, you can build a team, cross-functional team across you know, all the different uh, divisions that have input onto that particular thing. Does the tool come with all of the domain information in it? Yeah, he's set up uh, an account for us with all the domain standards, measures, requirements. Mm -hmm. Now, let, let me let me bring up one other potential uh, for you guys. There are a dozen health departments in Florida already using our system. If if you you know talk to them and they would allow it, we can give you access to their. Uh, dashboards so that you could look and they could actually put documents up and you guys could have access to exactly what they're doing because they can all have an accreditation project plan at the local level should they choose to or just to be able to manage their documents so you could go and grab those documents from their machine or for the, from their system and and use those you can link to them and everything else so just just a, an option the way the system is structured you could have access to anybody else who would let you have access to it May I ask a clarifying question on that? Are you referring to our county health departments when you say a dozen? Yes. yes. So, yeah. so some of our county health departments are already using this 
Yes, okay, some, C cool. some CHDs are using it, but it's really for their CHIP strategic plan. It's project-based, so none of them are using it yet for reaccreditation. Okay, okay, so that, that's what I wanted to uh, ask a question about, and that is my sense is that for reaccreditation, you, Nick, and your team would be the people who would best know mm -hmm. how this will um, impact reaccreditation because, I mean, you have to process everything. But it sounds like the same software could also help different divisions manage administrative projects. Yes, so this software, Absolutely. Janet has expressed interest in, in using this software for some of her division's projects. So now this is a conversation for another day that we could have as far as, okay, do we all want to share some monies and share some licenses, you know, get a bundle package and then have, you know, a handful of licenses go to preparedness, disease control, admin, and that you guys just manage your own project. Because that's what the Bureau is doing right now. So quality improvement plan, annual reports, we're just using them for project management. Because we're using it for project management and reaccreditation is in in essence, a giant project. We wanted to open it up to you guys and see if you're interested, if you felt like, yes, this might be helpful or beneficial or, you know, no, I, I think we just want to stick with what we've got. So that was really the purpose of this conversation today was purely based reaccreditation. Um, but obviously, if you want to have a conversation at a later time about using this type of software for some of your own divisions, projects and yeah that's fine but just for today just because next week I'm giving a recommendation on yes we're moving forward with this for this project or no we're just going to use the software for internal different projects okay. well so well that I'm just going to clarify whether whether you, what you're saying is that you would then make a recommendation whether this uh, whether this uh, dashboard um, the set up for reaccreditation would be what you want. But then the question would follow, do the different divisions want to set it up for whatever their projects are? Yeah, but that's up to, for instance, your division PM council, that's for you to make that recommendation. For me, it's just to say, okay, we're gonna use this software moving forward, but then when we decide that, then we that's gonna be communicated to the division directors, and then that this is really how we're gonna move forward. So that might replace some of the action plans we need to upload by the first of every month, you know, those, those work plan templates. So that would probably replace that. But again, so that's why and we can have a little conversation after this meeting, uh, maybe prior to next Wednesday of what all that would entail if we decide yes, we're moving forward with the software for this particular project. Any other division use of this software for anything else is up to the division, purely up to the division. Yeah, as far as like messaging, like if, if you were, um, uh, he kind of touched on it, but if let's just say it was the end of the month and you wanted to tell us to make sure, remind us to do our updates, mm -hmm. would there be a means for like you to be able to do something like that and then at the same time us to be able to reply on any issues we're having or? So I know that it's able to send out notifications. Fred, can you touch on uh, whether or not, for instance, what Victor just said, if a notification goes out, could they respond to that? And for instance, that would uh, they would be responding directly back to us, or would they have to send a e separate email, or how would that work? Well, what what happens is uh, the notification system is is fully automated. And so what happens is it's going to look at each and every objective and activity. It's going to look at the person assigned to that, and it's going to make a calculation based on if if they first of all. If the person hasn't up updated their information in 30 days, they're going to get an email. If they have anything lagging behind schedule, it's going to calculate that and send them an email just saying, hey, this, this particular activity is behind schedule or it's overdue. It's automatically going to send that out. What's going to happen is when you get that email, it's going to take you right back into the system, into this quick update screen. You're going to do that update, and then the system is updated. It doesn't really notify anybody, but it, it notifies you to do your update, so now the system is updated for everybody to see. So if uh, Victor gets that notification, 
Um, and there, so two ways in one, he can just click on, it'll take him right to what he was directed to and he can make the update and be fine. Um, exactly. or, or if for instance, it says he's behind schedule, there's a concern, but he wants to address that and say, Hey, this is what's going on. Could he respond to that? And I get a notification, uh, Likewise, if he goes in the system and he said he wants to say he wants to respond and say, "Hey, I've updated it. We're good to go." Is there a way for him to respond to those notifications to where a person gets that directly, such as, for instance, me? Um, not not currently, not that way. But but again, what happens is he would go in there probably and put a note in that particular activity saying, um, "You know, I can't update it right now. We're waiting on." An external partner to provide information or whatever the the note happens to be so the the notification it wouldn't really be a notification back to you it would just be a an update to that particular activity um we, we have been uh, talking about the idea of putting a a forward in there so now once i do an update i can hit a little button forward it so he can say i'm going to forward this to nick and then nick will now have all the information about what I just did in that particular system, or I can say, Nick, I can't do this. I need you to do this. So you'd be able to forward it, and Nick then will go in and do the updates, if that makes sense. So that's something we're uh, looking at the at the kind of what the surround is for doing that right now. Is that the kind of like notifications that when Nick comes and goes logs into the system that he'd instantly see it, or would he have to kind of dig down to to get that kind of information? So what's what's going to happen is on in this case. I've set this up so that on week one of the month, on a Wednesday, the system's gonna send out these email notifications automatically. So it's, it's gonna be an email that he's gonna get on Wednesday morning when he comes into work. And it's gonna take him into what we call the quick update system. The quick update system is just that walking through each of the activities he's been assigned, do the updates, and then you're done. It's about a three to five minute per month process for them to be able to do that. And so it is fully automated. When he logs in, when he clicks on the email link, it's going to log him in and it's going to say, do you want to go to the quick update system or go to the main dashboard? Most people choose to go to quick update. They do their updates and they're done. Okay. I see that we have uh, one more, two more minutes. I uh, want to be mindful of everyone's time and also uh, the room that we're using. And, and uh, so are there any other uh, questions? And before I open that up, uh, Fred, I will make sure that after this, I'll, I'll touch base with you. I, uh, I had one or two other questions that can be asked okay. outside of this venue. Um, but for Anna, Janet, and everyone in here, any other final comments or questions? Can I ask a bottom line question? Jeff? Yeah. About yes. cost. I know that, I well, know that, uh, well, I know that, for instance, a Division of Administration has been looking into some software, some projects, some administration management software. And, um, so I think they would be interested, but they would, but there would certainly be a question about cost. Like, do we have to have an well, issue? Let me let me show it to you. Um, we are we are very very cost effective, and I'll show you how that works here real quickly. Um, basically, it's a user based model. So the number of users and, and users are anybody who does anything in the system basically. So here here's the model here. So for instance, if you have um, Let's, let's start out with 10 users. Our minimum license, 10 users, it's $1,000 per year, all inclusive. Everything you've seen is in there. There's no add-ons, no fees. If I go to 50, it's $100 per user per year. Once I go to 51, watch the total here. It only goes up by 20 bucks. So from 51 to 125 is $20 per user per year. Above 125 is $10 per user per year. So it's, it's very, very cost effective. If I had 100 users total, it's six thousand dollars a year, and that that's everything. Fred, this is Anna. Um, uh -huh. Is training included in that price, or what kind of training? Because yep. I'm coming new into this stuff. I've never seen this, and I'm impressed okay. by it. But, um, Absolutely, training is included. We have okay. online training. We have a, a complete online training system in there. Anywhere between, depending on type of user you are, twenty minutes up to two and a half hours. And in, in addition to that, we do live training to follow on after people go through the online training, but it's all included in the price, yes. Thank you. Any other questions? 
I think that's it, Fred. Okay, well, Nick, if you, if you need to follow up, just please, please feel free to call me and uh, we'll, we'll answer any other questions you have. Okay, we'll do. And Anna and uh, Janet, I'll uh, follow up with you guys also. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much, you guys. Thanks, Fred. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, bye, everyone. Bye.